Welcome back, Mighty Family, to another Dr. Eric Debunks. Today, I wanna to talk about body metabolism. I know many of us mention how our metabolism isn't what it used to be, or that it's slowed down with age. Today, we'll jump into what that really means and what we can do about it and how we can keep our bodies in a healthy, healthy metabolic state. So first, let us define what metabolism is. So metabolism refers to a set of chemical reactions that occur within the cells in our bodies that is needed to maintain life. So for example, these chemical reactions are responsible for helping your body maintain its temperature, for breaking down the steak and eggs you ate for breakfast, to build muscle after a productive gym session. So as you can see, metabolism is in some ways all-encompassing. So to drill down a little bit deeper, metabolism is in a constant dynamic balance between catabolic and anabolic processes. So anabolic processes involve using energy to build more complex building blocks for your bodies. So for example, this would include the formation of proteins from amino acids and then the formation of new cells. Catabolic processes involve the breakdown of complex molecules into simpler ones, releasing energy in the process. So examples of catabolic processes include the breakdown of say sugar molecules to produce energy for your bodies to use. And the sum of all the chemical reactions occurring in an organism is known as its metabolic rate. So the metabolic rate can be influenced by factors such as genetics, age, gender, body composition, and activity level. So when people refer to metabolism in the context of weight management, they often mean the basal metabolic rate, which is the amount of energy expended by the body at rest. So the question I get asked a lot is, what causes metabolism to slow down? So when people refer to their metabolism slowing down, they are typically talking about a decrease in the basal metabolic rate or overall metabolic activity. So several factors can contribute to such slowdown in metabolism. So first is aging. This is partly due to a natural decrease in muscle mass and changes in hormone levels. The second reason is loss of muscle mass. So muscle tissues use up more energy than fat tissue. So therefore, loss in muscle mass, which can occur due to aging, inactivity, or inadequate protein intake, can lead to a reduction in metabolism. Next is hormonal changes. So hormones play a crucial role in regulating metabolism. Changes in hormone levels, such as those that occur during menopause or in conditions like hypothyroidism, can affect your metabolic rate. Next is lack of physical activity. So regular physical activity, especially strength training, helps maintain and build muscle mass, which can positively influence metabolism. A sedentary lifestyle can contribute to a decline in overall metabolic activity. So I know many of these contributors to slowing down metabolism doesn't surprise you, but I hope that they can help explain why it slows your metabolism down. As you can see, there are things that you can't control, such as aging. But the good part is that there are many parts that you can. So let's talk about a few. So the first is sleep. Sleep represents a state that allows for cell maintenance, repair, detoxification, and memory consolidation required for daily maintenance of metabolism. In people that are sleep deprived, they naturally have a higher level of a gut hormone called ghrelin, which stimulates hunger and appetite. Therefore, sleep deprivation leads to increased food intake, especially in the evening, and in excess that is required for energy balance, resulting in weight gain. So as the body gains more weight, the basal metabolic rate slows down as fat uses less energy than muscle. I know many of us, including myself, have stayed up late and have likely eaten snacks that we knew we were not you know, supposed to. However, what I wanna impart on you here is that there is a hormonal change that triggers those actions and the subsequent consequences of that. So one of the best things we can do for ourselves when we're talking about getting our metabolism right is to ensure we are giving our bodies the daily rest it needs and can benefit from. All right, so the second thing we can do to help increase our metabolism comes to diet. So every time we eat a meal, our body uses energy to break it down. Energy burned when processing your food depends on its content. So for example, processing the fat we eat requires about one to 3% of the energy contained in the fat. Carbohydrates are a bit higher in that it requires five to 10% of the energy it contains to process. Protein, on the other hand, is the highest. It requires 20 to 30% of the energy it contains to be processed. So this is why high protein diets can be effective in weight loss, effectively increasing your metabolism. 
The third thing we can do to increase our metabolism as we age is strength training. The goal is to ultimately increase the amount of muscle in your body and decrease the amount of fat. The reason doing this can help your metabolism is because muscle is more metabolically active than fat. This means the muscle in your body requires more energy to function than your fat tissue. And by using more energy regularly, you're able to increase your basal metabolic rate. So the message here is not to ask all of you to become bodybuilders, but recognize that lifting weights is so crucial for us as we all age. We naturally lose muscle with age, so we must be cognizant of that and counter it. In addition to improving your metabolism, it can also improve your function and chronic pain. So before we end today, I wanna to also take a moment to speak on metabolic syndrome. So metabolic syndrome is a group of conditions that increases your risk for heart disease, diabetes, and stroke. It is often defined by having at least three of the following criteria. So the first criteria is central obesity, where for men, your waist circumference is greater than or equal to 102 centimeters or 88 centimeters in women. The second criteria is hypertension, meaning your blood pressure is greater than 130 on the top number, which is systolic blood pressure, and 85 on the bottom number, which is your diastolic blood pressure. The third criteria is a fasting blood sugar greater than 100 milligrams per deciliter. The fourth criteria is to have less than 40 milligrams per deciliter of HDL in men and less than 50 in women. The last criteria is having triglycerides greater than 150 milligrams per deciliter. So the rapidly increasing prevalence of obesity among adults in the United States is likely going to contribute to even higher rates of metabolic syndrome in the future. The reason I wanted to review these specific criteria with you all is to never single anyone out or to put anyone to shame. Rather, it's to bring awareness that if any of these criteria apply to you, I would recommend you see your primary care doctor. And the reason being is that if you are diagnosed with metabolic syndrome, timely aggressive lifestyle changes can make all the difference. And if addressed early enough, it can reduce your risk for heart disease, diabetes, and even stroke. So please do not take this lightly and get the help you need if they apply to you. All right, Mighty Family, that was a ton of information. So let's go over a few Mighty takeaways for today. Metabolism re refers to a set of chemical reactions required for your body to function. There are two main processes, catabolic process and anabolic process. What most people refer to when they say metabolism is our basal metabolic rate, which is the amount of energy expended by the body at rest. There are many reasons why our metabolism slows down. It can be due to age, loss of muscle mass, hormonal changes, and even a sedentary lifestyle. Ways we can increase our metabolism is getting adequate daily sleep, higher protein intake, and strength training. And lastly, metabolic syndrome increases your risk for heart disease, diabetes, and stroke. All right, Mighty Family, this wraps up our segment for today. As always, I look forward to connecting with you all again soon. For those that are not a part of the Mighty Family just yet, check us out at MightyHealth.com for more. We're striving every day to be the modern holistic home for healthy living.